Hi, my name is Brett from Blockitude. Today I'm going to talk about the competency framework which can be applied to either a, an approved part 145 maintenance organisation or a part camo approved management organisation. Now just to set the foundation really before I continue, really this is the maybe the, an, the ideal of what a competency framework should look like. In some ways, you know, not everyone does it this way. Uh, and they may focus on a specific sort of area, which I'll cover, cover in a minute. But hopefully this will give you sort of an understanding of why you should maybe have this competency framework in place, because there are lots of benefits to the organization by having this type of system or this structure, if that makes sense. So really, what does the competency frame look like? Well, really, normally the competency, when you look go to different organizations, and we, for example, we audit different organizations, what they tend to focus on is the job specific sort of competencies. Or there may be a generic competency that actually applies to everybody it's across the board uh, and everyone's treated the same now if that's the case then really the issue with that is that you know it's not job specific it's just a generic and really it's not drilling down to understand what the competency sort of gaps are within the organization because we have to think about is that uh, competency is about understanding the yes it is about behaviors and attitude but it's also trying to understand what the different sort of uh, gaps are with regards to training so therefore, when people conduct a competency assessment, the that individual, that organisation is trying to understand where the gaps or the shortfalls within the organisation. And also, it can be considered part of a succession planning. So what I'm going to look at now is just three different things to consider when, you do, when you're developing your own sort of competency framework or the way to maybe treat that you may choose to actually maybe improve it, for example. See what you think as we move forward. Okay, so let's just now look and, or we're going to look and explore the competency framework in a little bit more detail. Now, on the screen, you'll see that I've broken the competency framework into three different areas. And as you can appreciate, not everyone has their own competency system like this. So therefore, if you don't, then I'm going to maybe suggest that this is the best way really to have an effective system or an effective competency framework. And really this would tick all the boxes in the form of meeting compliance and would demonstrate a more effective com effective compliance competency system uh, that you may have or to have actually so you can see here broke down to the core the common and the job specific now what you'll find in majority of organizations they only focus on one area that's the job specific now there are i'm not saying that's wrong uh, in some ways that's good but in some ways it can be improved now let me just go back a little bit and let's think about the core if we have or we get individuals or, or within our organization to start thinking about the core items then that would be actually looking at maybe our mission our values and really it's applicable to everybody across the board so therefore what we want to ensure is that people have a a really good understanding how the the organization actually what its values are what its mission is what is it want to try and achieve and so on so that's that's, the, that's really the foundation and then maybe the next sort of level up or the next big cog in that sort of wheel is to understand the common things now you can see i've talked about like communication maybe that could be down how we actually communicate with each other it could be down to how our email sort of correspondence our etiquette and all that how we actually like to think about teamwork looking a bit about leadership uh what systems we may use within the, the organization and so on and then we're back to our next sort of level the from the foundation is to that job specific so you focus really on that person or that individual's role and responsibilities and are they effective in doing that remember the competency assessment really is to try and identify gaps in people's knowledge and understanding of what we're trying to do so therefore really we're going to focus on training and that's the important thing about competency we're not looking to try and punish anybody we're just trying to understand where everybody sits within the organization and maybe some that there's like a lack of or lack of understanding or lack of knowledge in certain areas so we want to make sure everyone's at the same sort of level that's the important aspect of it and like i've indicated before what you'll find is some organizations will actually use uh just the job specific common or core or there may be a mixture of all three whatever that looks like but really what i'm just trying to get you to steer towards is you should be looking at all three areas that's important so now I've given you the idea of like core common and uh, job specific or the function within the organization so let's just think about now let's just translate this, 
like relate this to part camo and think about something slightly to try and demonstrate how effective having this system in place would be beneficial beneficial to the organization well what i've now put on the screen you hopefully should be able to see there's three different examples or three different areas and i try to give an examples of how we can determine someone's competency uh, in relation to that so what we're trying to think about is trying to understand how uh, the individual's competency meets up to meeting the requirements of part camo so the first one let's look at the core i've given you like four different examples really how we can measure someone's competency in relation to the core so the first one really is to understand and explain the safety policy and objectives now this is really important so under part camo we'd like to think that everybody in fact everybody in the organization must be able to tell me if i was the account manager or tell the quality or compliance uh, monitor manager or the safety manager what is the organization's safety policy and objectives that's really important so that'd be quite key Likewise, they should be able to describe how the safety policy and the objectives are promoted within the organization because that is a requirement under part camo. Next, I'd like to think that people should be able to describe how the organization reports occurrences. So we're thinking that or linking it to our internal safety reporting scheme. And then the final one really as an example is describe the process for occurrence reporting. Now you can see there that on those four points I've just under the core, they are key things that you should be able to, that everybody should be able to describe in the organization. And it's uh, like the fundamentals uh, to meet that part camo compliance. Next, you can see here, like under common, I've just got down, for example, this is only an example, describe and demonstrate the use of the computer systems uh, within the organization. Now, what you'll find is, is that Different organizations may use different sort of systems in place. I'm not going to tell you what they are or describe what they are, uh, but they may, you know, you may have them. It could be down to a simple sort of like office product, or it can be something that's really complicated. And what you find is that sometimes people are not trained on those systems. So they're rolled out, introduced to the organization, and there's a bit of a gap in people's understanding, knowledge, and experience in using that. Next, we've got to describe and demonstrate how you would access the CABE and the organizational procedures. So sounds fairly straightforward, but there will be people in your organization who will not know what the CAME is and will not know how to access the organizational procedures. As far as they're concerned, they're not even too sure they exist or don't even know where they are. So again, part of our competency assessment is for them to describe how they would do that, how to access it and so on. And then the job specific, really, you know, everybody should be able to, whatever their function is, should be able to describe their responsibilities and duties if that's the case they should be able to describe how they report a safety risk or safety concerns that's most important again under like part camo we need to think about that or get your head around it and then the final finally is describe how you actually manage your your daily tasking so what do they do on a day-to-day -day basis let's just understand that they actually are being effective in their sort of role so you can see there i've just given you over the three different areas there are definitely benefits and if you think about it, if people just focus on the, on the job specific, which you can just see here, there's not a lot of detail. Where if people focus on the common or include the core and the common, you can see that adds a sort of benefit to the organization. So everyone, you know, me, if I was an account manager, can sleep safely at night that I know that people know what we're trying to do and so on. Okay, so just coming nearly towards the end now of, the, of this little sort of a session, just think about the benefits so by having the competency framework i just described to you which is the core common and the job specific uh, what that will do is by having that system in place it would ensure that people have maybe greater ownership of what's going on within the organization organization itself they're going to feel included because sometimes i think if you have like a just a job specific focused competency assessment and it is just a tick box exercise then people will just devalue it they don't feel it actually makes a difference uh, and it undermines really what we're trying to do. And if you think about it, if you did include all three areas, like I just described to you, uh, and you have a review of that, for example, it will actually change the, the game and get people involved. People want to be, you know, be part of something. You know, you want them to, we want them to try and raise the, the bar on aviation safety. So it's quite key. Uh, I think it'd be really important to, to include the, the core and the common as well as the job specific. Likewise, 
it'll be tailored to you what you're doing so therefore prevents you going the wrong sort of direction the other next one was obviously when we talk about jogging specific you know there is some sort of gaps uh and i'm really pleased that it's not actually been included within the part camel regulatory requirements i describes everything you need to have in place because of what you should be uh, uh, assessed against and the competency because if you did that uh, then it will become form of, of a form of compliance for example those people who are familiar with the part 145 uh, competency sort of guidance documents within that regulatory requirements it is a tick box and you'll find organizations who do use that they'll just tick against it with no value no meaning no understanding or no really not really applying it really properly in the, or the intent of it so likewise uh, you want to keep it specific to what you're doing within the organization keep it quite uh, unique is what I'm trying to say and likewise you can see here in the indicated here every organization works differently so you can't use it like a generic one keep it specific to what you're doing within your organization organization itself finally it's the competitive advantage if you do adopt the core common and the job specific then i would definitely or i would like to think that would give you the extra added benefit of a more of being more competitive that would be important for myself if i was the account manager in this time and place within the current sort of status of the industry we want to be competitive we want to have the the edge the advantage and therefore i want to make sure that all my personnel my team all my all my employees know exactly where, where they are what the gaps are how we're going to bring them along how they're going to keep on on track with what we're trying to do there are some sort of challenges when we think about this though for example you know to have this sort of system in place to have like an effect a really effective competency system in place or this framework it does need resource allocation so it needs people it needs time uh, so you think about that from the people to do it properly set the foundation and then the time allocation really we think about obviously developing the monitoring the conducting the assessments and documenting it now when we talk about time allocation itself and this monitoring you know this monitoring can be an ongoing monitoring it doesn't have to be like a yearly or two yearly however you want to look at it it can be actually an ongoing assessment of those individuals uh, and sometimes what actually gets what undervalues this whole sort of competency assessment really or this competency framework is that when people do the assessments it just becomes a form of a tick box exercise where people it's not a two-way discussion it's not about the identifying training needs it just don't tick 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 and that's the job done so it undervalues what you're trying to do if you if you want to make it uh, effective you've got to allocate time uh, and ensure that you obviously you're bringing people along identifying the gaps in their knowledge and experience and obviously raise a bar it will work that way if you do that properly it will raise the game in, in people what the people in what people are doing within the organization so that's it really uh, i don't want to talk anymore about competency framework if you want to know more about it then obviously drop us a line uh, we do run a uh, course on the competency understanding for the part camo uh, to tick that box and, and re reinforce that really uh, likewise if you like this video then give us a thumbs up on the uh, youtube sort of page that'd be good give us a like if you like that any sort of questions or comments then I'll just drop a comment on the the youtube page if you can likewise you can always contact us on the telephone number you can see on the screen at this moment in time or you can drop an email to us at sales at blue-altitude.com or you can go to our contact us page on, on our website and again film the narrative send it to ourselves and then one of the team members will get back to you and, and, re, and then hopefully that answers any sort of question that you do have that's it for today thanks for your time take care bye bye